This is the University of Rochester. The year 2010 is the 50th anniversary of the invention of the laser. And that means the laser was, in, was really d made to work for the first time in 1960. And it's interesting to get a sense of what was going on at that time. There were a number of people trying to make lasers work. They had this idea that you could produce this light source that was based on some of the discoveries from radar from the decades before. And several labs around the country were trying to make lasers work. And one particular group reported one of the first results. And it, it was really one of these discoveries that people didn't really appreciate at the time. In fact, one of the first things that was said about lasers are they're a solution looking for a problem. If you look at where some of the most exciting science is happening, it's happening when, when lasers take technology and take science to an extreme. And it's really interesting because there are many extremes, frontiers that the laser is at. A local frontier is the frontiers of temperature. This lab, we cool atoms down, small clouds of atoms, maybe a million or a billion atoms, down to millionths or billionths of a degree above absolute zero. And that's colder than any natural place in the universe. And what we do is we try to understand the things, very simple things like how two atoms come together and turn into a molecule. Or how, when matter becomes so cold, do the quantum mechanical properties that could be used for both understanding the fundamental nature of physics, but also future schemes in communication and computation, how things work at that limit. But not far from here, about two miles, there's a laboratory that produces some of the highest temperatures known to man and known to scientists, also using lasers. That's the Laboratory for Laser Energetics, where a tiny little pellet is, is irradiated by laser light from almost all directions, creating a shock wave that squeezes the pellet so hard that it reaches megakelvins uh, and some of the highest temperatures. So there are moments here in Rochester where we probably have two of the largest temperature extremes anywhere on the planet. So right now, the frontier of lasers is at these limits where size or time or temperature or pressure are being pushed to their limits because of lasers. And somebody asked me recently, why, what's so special about the laser? Why has it been such an important thing? And, and why do people, including myself, think that it's the gift that we'll keep on giving? It will be at the heart of future discoveries for decades to come. And that's a tough question, but if you ask, how, how does nature work, at least the piece of nature that we live in? The laser light, it, it's a special form of light, and light is arguably the most important single quantity in our world as humans. It is the reason why we have eyes. It is the reason that we have oxygen on this planet. It's the reason that we have food that we can eat. Uh, it is, in fact, the ultimate interactions that are involved in light, electricity and magnetism, that gives rise to the fact that we have different kinds of atoms, that gives rise to the fact that matter looks the way it does. So when you begin to think about it as a physicist, what it is that actually makes our universe the place it is, what gives it its, its structure, the shape, what allows us to be here, it really traces back more than any other interaction to the existence of light. So when you invent something like a laser, where in a laser all the light is moving in a phase lock way, like waves moving down an ocean, you've got a pure form of light that's one of the most important probes and interactions that you can have. So once you harness that, it's really not surprising that almost every field of human endeavor and technology is touched by it, and I think will be for another 20 years to come. This is the University of Rochester.